welcome to lesson 8.5. You should be looking at page 33 of your packet. Um, what we're going to be doing today is creating and interpreting two-way frequency tables. So for this first video, um, a two-way frequency table can be used to organize data that can be categorized by two variables. So it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a two-way frequency table because i got two different things that I want to display data about. Um, so, for example, if I surveyed a group of elementary school students about their favorite parts of the circus, then I could create a two-way frequency table that breaks them down into subgroups of boys and girls, and then also breaks them down into subgroups of people who like clowns best, people who like acrobats best, or people who like the elephant tamer the best. And then I could get, I could figure out from this table, the total number of boys is 13. The total number of boys who like acrobats is two. The total number of girls is seven. The total number of girls who likes two, uh, clowns is two. And then I can get the total number of kids that like clowns is five. And I can look and see, okay, well, if you're a boy and you like clowns, then you're one of three. If you're a girl and you like clowns, then you're one of two. Um, we break the numbers in these tables up with different names. Uh, joint frequencies are the numbers in the middle of the table, so these ones that are joining two pieces of information. This three, like I said, this represents the group of people that are both boys and like clowns the best. This one right here is joining two pieces of information. It's a girl because it's in this row, and it likes elephant tamers because it's in this column. Okay, the subtotals over here and then your major total here are called marginal frequencies. Um, they're found along the outside of the two-way tables, kind of like the margins on a paper when your English teacher tells you to have one inch margins. She's talking about the edges of the paper. And we call those marginal frequencies. Like I said, these are subtotals. This is the subtotal of number of kids that liked elephant tamers the best, and there were a subtotal of six kids that liked acrobats the best. This one is also considered a marginal frequency. It is your grand total, though. It's This is how many kids were polled in this survey. All right. Um, so... We can also look at relative frequencies. Relative frequencies are basically just your ratios. Um, if I want to find a joint relative frequency, then that means I'm going to take uh, a joint frequency and I'm going to divide it by the number of data values. Um, I'm going to change this a little bit. And instead of saying relative frequency, I'm going to say the joint frequency divided by the total uh, pieces of data. A marginal relative frequency is exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to take my marginal frequency and divide it by the total amount of data. Here's what an example would look like using this vocabulary. Now, not every problem you see is going to use this fancy joint relative frequency vocabulary, but you may see it, so that's why we're covering it here. Um, this one says to find the joint relative frequency of boys who like the elephant tamer. If I'm telling you I want joint relative frequency, then that means I get to look at my total number of boys who like elephant tamers, and I'm going to divide by the total number of pieces of data. So, going back to that original table, Boys who like the elephant tamers, my total was 8. The total number of pieces of data is 20. So, this is going to go 8 divided by 20. When I divide that, I'm going to get 8 divided by 20 is 4 tenths, or 0 0.4. Um, you may see this written as a decimal. Sometimes you'll see it written as a percentage, which means move it two decimal places to the right, and that would be 40%. So 40% of the kids polled were boys who like elephant tamers. If I ask you for a marginal relative frequency of students who like the clowns best, then that means I'm going to take a marginal frequency, all the students who like clowns, and divide it by the total number of pieces of data. So again, I'm going back to that original table, and students who like clowns, we had a total number of five. The grand total of data values is 20, so I'm going to have five divided by 20, the marginal frequency, divided by the total of all data, and when I divide five by 20, I get, um, not that, when I get, I get five divided by 20 is 0 0.25, or 25 hundredths, 
or if you want to write it as a percentage, then it would be 25%. Um, we've actually filled out this table here that has all of that information listed for you. So this would what we call this would be what we call a relative frequency uh, table. So I've got 15 percent of the students surveyed are boys who like clowns. Uh, I can check my work here. Boys who like elephant tamers was 0.4 or 40 percent. Total students who like clowns was 25. Notice that you have a 1 here. That's because if I take this marginal frequency, which would be 20, and divide it by the total of all data, which would be 20, I get 1 or 100 percent. So 100 percent of the people surveyed were surveyed. That's what that tells us. Not anything really helpful. All right. Um, conditional relative frequency is the last one that we're going to talk about um, with a fancy name. It is the ratio of joint frequencies to the marginal frequency. An example of a conditional relative frequency would be the number of girls whose favorite performer was the clown. So the marginal frequency um, that I would be looking at here would be the total number of girls. Well, the total number of girls surveyed was seven. And while I'm here, I can also see of those girls, how many liked clowns. That would be two. So the joint frequency I'm looking for is two. The marginal is seven because I want girls who like clowns. So I'm going to say the total number of girls is seven. The girls who like clowns are two. So when I divide that to get my relative frequency, I get a crazy decimal that I'm going to have to round. So I'm going to say is approximately 0 0.29 or 29%. So about 29% of the girls prefer clowns. Okay, so to create a relative frequency table, all I have to do is go through and do all of my division. Now, this just says create a relative frequency table. So if it doesn't say conditional relative frequency, then you can assume that it's just a regular relative frequency, which means I'm going to divide each of these values by my grand total. So the number of students we're looking at here is 50. So I'm going to divide every one of these, both the joint and the marginal values, by 50. All right, so I'm going to pause the recording real quick and get all those answers, and I'll show you what I've got, and then you can check yourself. So give me just one second. All right, I'm back, and like magic, mine's all finished. So all I did was go through and divide each of these by 50. So 3 divided by 50 is 600, or so 0.06. So that would mean 6% of the students surveyed are taking French and are girls. Um, I can also look at the number of Spanish students compared to the whole population. 50% or 0.5 um, are taking Spanish, 0.28 are taking French, 0.22 are taking German. Those should, those subtotals down here should add up to one, the same way as the boys plus the girls should add up to one. Or if you have it as percentages, you got 40% plus 60%, that adds up to one. Um, so, those are my answers. Check and make sure you got the same division. Uh, and then you've got a you try that you can attempt, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.